Then your heart, then your heart, what that dang dang, and go, then your heart, then your heart, what that dang dang. This is the black pot. Yeah, AKA yeah, Kuku Show number where we speak truth to power. And I want to say thank you so much for coming along with me. Here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'd only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. <laughs> Now, the very first story we are looking at today, my brother, my sister, is taken from Ghana, wherever. And I need you to come along. My brother, my sister, it says, go to Canada and see how a Kumsin defense cost of rent in Ghana. Go to Canada and see. I read it. Mavis Hawakumsen, the Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture, has defended the cost of rent in Ghana amidst growing complaints about the high cost of living. Now, in a recent interview on Onuya FM's morning show uh, with Nana Yao Brefo and JB, the Ewutu Senior East Member of Parliament, urged Ghanaians to compare rent rates between Ghana and Canada. She highlighted her recent visit to Canada emphasizing that renting even a single room there could cost over two thousand canadian dollars per month significantly more expensive than in ghana people have been complaining that rent is expensive in ghana they should go to canada for a month you pay over two thousand canadian dollars that's for a single room not even a chamber and <sighs> my brother so these are the people you have voted in as your MPs very small brains very nonchalant and at the same time very insensitive I am sad this is the level of law brains you have decided to go for as your representative in parliament. Somebody who did not even perfectly understand what it meant to say fisheries and aquaculture is a minister in the Nana Akufu Ado government. To add more insults to injury, a group of people decided to elect her as their MP. This is the level of nonchalance and misbehavior we have in our country. Where vote buying is so rife. Where we only vote for people because they are big botox and not big brains. My brother, my sister, listen to what Mavis Hawakumsen is saying. You compare a poverty-stricken country like Ghana to Canada. Go to America and find out how much KFC costs and come to Ghana and find out how much the same costs. In every jurisdiction, they look at the income of the people. You must understand what it means to say per capita income. Per capita income. What amenities do you have in the area? I'm talking about amenities. How much amenities do you have in the area? When you go to Canada, every second electricity is on. When you go to Canada, at a single phone call, the ambulance is there. Before you even call the police, the police will be knocking at your door. These are the immaculate services we have in the area. When you live in a country where a minister can load and hide several millions of American dollars under her bed and in cupboards and wardrobes, and yet no forensic evidence is able to unravel that. When you live in a country where a CID boss will tell you, oh, we have found and located the girls, we shall bring them to their parents alive. In a few days, 
they bring bones to represent these girls who were in fact kidnapped in Takrade. When you live in a country where there are more mosquitoes than food, when you live in a country where there are more betting centers than schools, when you live in a country where we produce so many nurses, yet we keep 90% of them at home, unemployed, and people are dying in the hospitals for lack of nurses, you will realize what folly we have put ourselves in and bargained for. It hurts me that Hawa Kumsen tells me that she goes to Canada and sees all these amenities and sees all these services and sees the immaculate services that are meted out to the people. How the streets are so clean. How the beaches are perfect. My brother, my sister, in terms of cleanliness. What is the minimum wage in Canada? I talked about the per capita income. My brother, my sister. And this is what our Kumsen. You see, when you vote blockheads into power, this is what happens. Is it not the same how a kumsin that was blacklisted? I don't like that word. Whitelisted, my brother, my sister. For carrying macho men around to beat up journalists. My brother, my sister, I blame parliament. Now I understand what Kennedy and Japan meant when he said now, any idiot can be a member of parliament. I didn't say that. He said any Tom, Dick, and Harry, any idiot, Parliament of Ghana has become so cheap that any idiot could be a member. Now I understand. I didn't at the time. But now I know that there are some honorables who should best be described as dishonorables. One of those is Hawa Kumsi. <laughs> Next. Yabo. Watch this, my youth. And I'm taking this from PCFM Online. It says, you promised to have only 50 ministers, but your campaign team alone has 40, min 40 people. Kwesi Pratt, thou Baumier's pledge. I read. Let's go. Managing editor of the Insight newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., has questioned Dr. Mahmoud Baumir's commitment to his pledge to reduce the size of his government if elected president. Dr. Mahmoud Baumir, outlining his vision to Ghanaians weeks ago, stated emphatically that the number of ministers he will appoint won't exceed 50. To him, the number is feasible to work in achieving his vision and policies in the nation. I will not have more than 50 ministers and deputy ministers he emphasized in an address at apsa on wednesday february 7 but kwesi pratt thinks otherwise he says that his campaign team alone has over 40 people agrobesoa a fair my brother my sister i honestly do not still understand why people believe in Bawomia. I honestly do not understand why some people still take Baumia serious. This is the Mr. Bean of Ghana politics. He has run out of jokes. And right now, my brother, my sister, his career has crashed to the ground. My brother, my sister, you want not more than 50 ministers and their deputies when you become president. In the rare occasion that you become one. Now your campaign team alone has over 40. My brother, the least said about this, the better. Baumia has disappointed everybody, every well-meaning Ghanaian. Now those who still follow Baumia, 99.99% are boot leakers. Who are waiting for something to drop so they can leak no correct thinking patron of this nation i dare say that will still follow baumia after all the lies that brother has said a brother of mine called me from the north and he said black rasta you always say baumia 
tells lies and lies and lies. But you never mention which lies. And I asked him, do you listen to me? Abu Blushi. We are going to build toilet for you. Say, who got toilet? Ube Jari. He said it. How many years ago? Oh, when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate would expose you. Oh, it was true then and it's still true. But it is not every time that when the exchange rate is higher than your country's currency means that the fundamentals are weak. Oh, we are not going to encourage any taxation. We are going to talk about production. He emphatically told us this. Today, my brother, yesterday I went out there to one of the beaches here in Accra and I was shocked. We have something called GRA taxes. We have entertainment tax. We have GRA tax. What animal is that? GRA, Ghana Revenue Authority tax. What kind of a tax is that? I thought all those taxes were going to the GRA. Entertainment tax, food tax, water tax, air tax, whatever tax, everything. Is it not under the shed of the GRA? But we still have GRA tax. When I saw the receipt, I cringed. Was this the economy Bawamia promised us? Production laden economy. Today, in fact, he is more than a tax collector. I can mention seven trillion lies that Baumia told. You can have him as your president. I would not even employ him as a houseboy. Forget it. <laughs> My brother, my sister, I'm going to look at this one and it's going to take me only two minutes and I'll be done. It's from 3news.com and it says, PNC calls for interdiction of heads of every girls and others. PNC. Now, the People's National Convention, PNC, says the heads of senior high schools where some students have recently been lost should be interdicted for thorough investigations to be done. Now, the Ministry of Education should take should make public the results of their investigations and outline the disciplinary actions to be taken against those responsible to prevent similar incidents in the future. Oh, yes. Now, since we broke this every story, I have been crying. A young girl complained of stomach ache. Take her to the hospital. Day one, day two, they were calling the father to come and take the girl to school, as, uh, the hospital, as we're told. At the end of the day, she died on the floor in the school. No school buses. When the hospital at Ebri is just a stone throw. Yes, it's just a stone throw away from the school. But my brother, it also happened at Kalpohing, SHS in Tamale where a student lost his life because they were supposed to take this student to the hospital, they rather decided to push this student, two fellow students to take him to the hospital. He died. Why are we treating the future generation, the future leaders like this? It hurts me. The way some of these senior house masters and schools in general treat students is like they're slaves. It's most unfortunate, my brother. And I am hurt. I am hurt. Why do you treat students like prisoners? Why do you treat students like slaves? They beat them like animals. They give them bad food to eat. Food that they will never give to their own children. Look at how we treat each other. If this is how we should be treating our students, then we should go back into the days of slavery. The modeling newscaster is in the house. She's wearing a yellow top and a yellow in. And then she has a...